Well, it's about time for an update for this VMC that I've got tucked in my little garage. So uh, stay tuned. Hopefully you learn a thing or two if you have Fagor 8055 controls. So there's been some requests for an update on the VMC I got. And uh, it's been pretty, it's been a slow process. But today I had some help from a friend um, who's a CNC machinist. And he came over and helped me get the conversational part of the milling machine operable. Well, it was operable, but I just didn't know how to use it. So um, I set up a quick little circular pocket here. I'm not going to cut on any material. Um, I have the block there simply just to have something on the table. Um, and uh, I'm going to do a quick little uh, circular pocket, one inch one. Uh, we'll take a look at this. I'm pretty excited. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm really anxious to make some parts with this, but right now I don't have T slots for this table that fit it properly. So I'm gonna hopefully get some soon and we'll make some more things happen, but uh, happy about that. I've got my tooling set up. Take you off of here. So I wasn't even sure what to put in here. I only have 10. Uh, tool holders so um well i've got more tool holders than that but this only holds 10 so i've got in here a three flute uh solid carbide um end mill and then i've got a two flute um half inch carbide end mill in here um and then i've got a quarter inch four flute in the spindle right now i've got a half inch drill a quarter inch drill a I think that's a 3 8 chamfer mill or chamfer drill, whatever you call that guy. It's a four flute. And then a 5 16 center drill, a edge finder, and then an eighth inch uh, end mill. That's what I've got in here now. I'm sure I'm going to want something else in there, um, but I want to just put some tools in there so it looks more like a machine ready to make some parts. So. Maybe I'll do a quick overview of this. I'll try to explain it without sounding like too much of a moron. So, this guy, let me try to get you guys in here close. A lot of glare. Okay, one thing I kinda had tunnel vision on when I was trying to figure out this conversational on my own, um, well, number one, I've watched the Fagor videos for this 8055 controller. Um, they're not extremely helpful for me. For some reason, they're just not set up the way I learn. Uh, and also the like 400 page manual, it doesn't actually show you how to do this. It talks about what the functions of circular pockets and all these other things are, but it doesn't show you how to execute that. So that manual is not very useful for me either and I've read through it a few times. Um, that being said, I skimmed through it, but uh, there's not actually information on how you go and actually make a part. It just talks about what a circular pocket is and all this stuff. Um, so if you go and you scroll through each one of these items, um, on the bottom left, I wasn't seeing this. So it says center X coordinate. So uh, that's helpful because it shows you on here, like there's a screen with all these different letters and stuff on there and different symbols, but there's a lot of them. And uh, if you're not familiar with this, perhaps it's confusing as it was for me. And there's not a lot of help uh, on this controller. So I'll just walk through here really quick. The main thing I wanna point out is just look down here on the bottom left, that shows you what each thing is. So once you enter your coordinate, so say you're centered on your part where you want your pocket, uh, you can look on here and see the actual value of where you are on the table, and we're at uh, minus uh, six inches, four hundred and sixty-seven thousandths, and two ten thousandths. Uh, that's our X position, and then uh, you can enter that if that's where you want the center of your circular pocket to be. You can simply enter that in. So we could go six point four six seven two. Make sure you hit enter because if you don't hit enter, it won't save it. Um, and then down to the Y, if uh, we're where we want to be, 
uh, we're gonna go ahead and hit minus uh, 4.3607 enter okay so now we've got our X and Y set now R is asking what's the radius of the pocket that you'd like so for this one I wanted a one inch diameter pocket so I put a radius of half of that which is 500 thousandths um, but say you wanted a two inch one we'll just switch this to one inch enter okay now uh, safety Z coordinate this is your clearance above the the actual work so if you've got fixturing and clamps and stuff on there um, I've got mine set to a quarter inch above the Z height well if you've got some clamps that are an inch tall on there you might want to set this to like uh, 1.5 inches so that when you're traveling across the part you don't catch one of your clamps and mess up your machine or your tooling um, and then we'll just hit enter and then for the Z um, the part Z coordinate um, okay so that is where the top of your pocket begins so if you want that to be at uh, zero then that's where you're gonna set that if um, like this is your I guess your reference mark everything's gonna be based off of that so um, I always have my Z set to zero uh, you can do what you'd like with that so I'm gonna leave it at zero hit enter pocket depth so I had a um, 500 thousandths deep pocket or a half inch um, so you hit minus and then whatever depth you want so say we wanted it one inch we can hit minus 1.0 enter I is the pass on Z this is your actual step depth so on like Mach 3 you'll I think it calls out pocket or step depth on a Mach 3 software so this is equivalent to that so on the Z I was making 100 thousandths increments down in my part so uh, perhaps we want to just bring that up to 200 thousandths on this this one um, and then the feed rate on the Z I had this at 59 inches a minute which is pretty damn fast for plunging into material um, I think that's too fast but for demonstrational purposes I wanted to see the machine move quickly so that's what I did and so I'll just keep that the same hit enter and then roughing feed rate I have this set at 400 inches a minute which this machine I don't think actually moves that fast but I wanted to max it out and see where it went I'll have to go look in, in the parameters and see where the machine actually does um, max out at unlike Mach 3 this doesn't show me my actual feed rate as the parts being machined uh, there might be another screen I can access that would but I don't see it and then uh, so anyway feed rate I got that set to 400 and I'll set it to 200 for now um, spindle speed so I've got it set at 4,000 rpms um, we could set it at 3750 if we wanted um, and then this is the spindle rotation so if you want your spindle set at um, you know the conventional direction which is clockwise um, you go ahead and leave this here but say you had a you bought some cutters by mistake and they were actually uh, reversed uh, so you could go ahead and uh, change the uh, spindle rotation here and then so I'm gonna leave that there hit enter um, now what tool do you want so I have tool number seven set up here so I'm gonna go ahead and hit tool number seven and uh, D7 D is its position in the actual tool rack inventory as far as I know um, on this machine so I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter then that's the only tool I actually have programmed in, into the machine with its offsets. Um, okay, and then this guy, sideways penetration angle, um, that's set to 90 degrees, so it should go off to the side, straight to the side every time it goes to do its next step over. So I'll hit enter there. And the roughing pass um, is set at 125 thousandths or an eighth inch. That's fine. I can hit enter. Finishing um, feed rate. So that's set to 100, so it's a little slower. Spindle 4000. Uh, spindle uh, rotation is the same. Same tool, the same position, and the tool changer and that 90 degree approach angle is the same. Um, now the finishing pass. 
Um, that's like how much material do you want to hit at the very end um, to make one last clean pass. Um, I've got 30 thousandths set there. Um, number of finishing passes on the Z. So how many passes do you want to go down? Oh, sorry, plunge down. Um, and if you needed two for whatever reason, you could set that, but I'm only going to do one. And then the finishing pass in Z, I've got that set to zero. So it's not doing a true um, Z uh, finish, but you know what? Screw it. Let's, let's set one zero. We'll go 10 thousandths. Enter. Okay. Now from here, if you want to launch this bad boy, uh, you simply need to hit the escape button. When you hit escape, I'm going to show you the screen when you, right now you don't have the option to hit cycle start. So I'm going to hit escape. And now you can see that green indicator here. Now you're ready to run your program. So I'm gonna back the camera up. We're gonna take a look at this run really quick. I keep my hand really close to this e-stop button. Huh. X axis soft limit overrun. And hit escape. Oh, <laughs> here's the problem right here. I didn't put minus six, so let me fix that. Minus, enter. Okay, that's it. Now, let me try this again. I'll get out of the way. It's magic. This is magic to me anyway. This machine is so quiet compared to like uh, one of the hobbyist ones. You'd think this big beast would be a monster, but it's not. I'm gonna shut the lid. It's even quieter, but you can't see through it very well because this thing's been used and abused a little bit. I might replace that sometime, I might not, because this is probably polycarbonate, and that crap's expensive, and really, um, the only th reason I might change it is for you guys so you can see better on camera, but for my purposes, it's going to allow me to see in there good enough to see the parts and everything being made. So anyway, this is just oh, sorry, I just got a phone call there, <laughs> um, but anyway, one small step in the right direction, so hopefully you guys like the video. Uh, I will share more knowledge as I get it but this is pretty much what I've got so if you got one of these machines I know there's not a bunch of information out there for it um, I'm gonna show you one last thing this right here is gonna allow me to transfer USB uh, thumb drive uh, data like G code from my cam directly to this machine without doing a laptop or anything so I wanna show you guys how to use this once I figure it out so right now I have not got it programmed, but this is uh, to come in the near future. And for less than 200 bucks, you can get this set up. You don't have to have a bunch of uh, you know fancy crap like another laptop out here and um, hooking up to this um, RS-232. Uh, there's another option, so uh, stay tuned for that. It should be pretty cool.